Hey Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector channel where we are a community of collectors. Today we are talking about Voldemort's Seven Souls, AKA Horcruxes. We're going to take a look at the seven Noble Collection replicas that each represent one seventh of the Dark Lord's soul. I'm wearing my Half-Blood Prince shirt today because that's where we learn most about the Horcruxes. And if you don't know the term Horcrux, it is an item a witch or wizard uses to hide a piece of their soul. We're gonna look at Hufflepuff's Cup, Slytherin's Locket, Nagini from the Noble Collection's Creature Collection, the ultra rare Harry Potter glasses. This is what I'm using to represent the seventh Horcrux or Harry Potter himself, Ravenclaw's Diadem, Marvolo Gaunt's Ring, and Tom Riddle's Diary. So I think it's only fitting to go in order of the Horcruxes that were destroyed first. So in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Tom Riddle's diary is introduced as well as destroyed. It was given to Ginny Weasley by Lucius Malfoy and Tom Riddle's memory started to emerge from the diary itself. This replica right here is incredible. I love the metal corners on the diary. Stamped in gold foil, we see the name Tom Marvolo Riddle. The pages on the inside are blank, just like when Harry found it in the girls' bathroom. And then in the movies, a drop of ink landed on the page and disappeared. Anything that Harry wrote into the journal also disappeared, and then the journal started to respond back. So, as far as movie replicas go, this is a great, great replica. It's faux leather, again, we have those metal corners, and then blank on the inside. Now, the Noble Collection sells a display version of this. This you could actually write in and use, but the display version has a hole in the center, as well as a basilisk fang sticking out of it. Next up, we have Marvolo Gaunt's ring, and Marvolo Gaunt was Voldemort's grandfather, or Tom Riddle's grandfather and also holds the Resurrection Stone. The Resurrection Stone is one of the three Deathly Hollows. Really, really cool ring design. And in the center of the Resurrection Stone, we see the symbol of the Deathly Hollows, which is very, very fun. Now, Marvolo Gaunt's ring comes with this awesome display case. It's made out of wood. There's a little spot to hold the ring up. There's a mirror here on the bottom, which helps reflect the light upward towards the ring. And then it comes with a glass and wood display case. And then the sides of the display case, as well as in the center itself behind the ring, there are also mirrors, which again, help reflect the light around the ring itself. Marvolo Gaunt's ring found its demise and its end when it was destroyed by Dumbledore. All right, next to be destroyed was, I believe, the locket. So here we have Salazar Slytherin's locket. And just like Marvola Gaunt's ring, it comes with this nice wood and glass display case. The back, sides, and bottom are all mirrors, again, to help reflect that light and just really make this piece stand out. And then to get to the locket itself, you pull the top off and there are two hooks here to hold the chain in place. And what's really cool about the display case is in the back there's a little slit and that slit hides the excess chain behind the, the mirror that is on the back of this display case. So it provides a really nice clean look when you're displaying the locket. Now this is a functioning locket, it does open up and then on the inside is green felt. But this is absolutely stunning. I mean, the design of the snake with the gemstones within the gemstone and those ancient runes, it makes it feel very ancient, which it is because Salazar Slytherin was the owner of it. And Slytherin's locket was destroyed by Ron Weasley in The Forest of Dean. The next destroyed Horcrux was Hufflepuff's Cup, and this was destroyed in the Chamber of Secrets by Miss Hermione Granger. This thing has some really, really nice weight to it. It feels as if this is a solid gold cup, which it's not, but it feels like it is, which is cool. Every part of this is metal. It has some really nice detail, some shading, which gives it an aged look. It is a very petite cup, and then on the front is a gold badger. What's nice is the bottom is felt lined, so if you put it on a shelf or on your table, it's not going to scratch that piece of furniture. In my opinion, this is a great piece for the price that you pay for it. It displays so, so beautifully. Next up on the list is one of my absolute favorite noble collection items. This is Ravenclaw's diet. Diadem. Diadem is like another name for tiara, so it's a small crown, and it comes in this really nice display box trimmed in silver foiling. There's a silver raven on the front to represent Ravenclaw. It should be an eagle, but there is a raven. And then when you open up the display box, 
Now you're probably looking at the diadem, but if you look beyond the diadem, we see a silver foiled Ravenclaw crest on the back of the display box. The inside is lined with satin and the diadem itself, absolutely stunning, stunning piece. And you Ravenclaws will be excited to know that an eagle is represented right here. Now these aren't real sapphires or diamonds, but they certainly look like real sapphires and diamonds. The facets or cuts on these different stones really bring out an incredible brilliance. These are probably pieces of glass that are just sparkling and shining like diamonds and sapphires. Etched into the metal of the diadem itself says, wit beyond measure is man's greatest treasure. Wit is one of the traits of a Ravenclaw. The eagle is sporting a diamond eye, and then the body of that eagle is that giant sapphire stone. And then there are two stones dangling from there. Now, this piece is a little bit tarnished, and to be honest with you, I really like that tarnished look. It makes it feel more aged, it makes it feel more authentic. The craftsmanship of this is top, top notch. And then add on the display element, this piece is a absolute must, in my opinion, for any Harry Potter collection. The Niffler in me is freaking out with all of that sparkle. Now in the movies, Harry Potter is the one who destroys Ravenclaw's diadem, but in the books, it's fiend fire, which is cursed fire, that destroys the Horcrux within, and unfortunately, also the diadem. So the ways to destroy a Horcrux are Basilisk Venom and Fiend Fire. Super hard to destroy, super hard to detect, and we can thank the existence of Dumbledore for helping Harry discover Horcruxes. The next to be destroyed was Harry Potter himself, or the Horcrux or piece of soul from Voldemort that was living inside of Harry himself. Now this is a Noble Collection item that I have been waiting to find for a very long time. It is a retired piece, they're no longer making this, and they are replicas of Harry Potter's glasses and come in this really nice wood and glass display case. So when we open up the lid, it reveals the glasses themselves. Let's carefully take them out. Look at those stunning, little glasses. These are black and silver frames, and then of course the lenses themselves. This is a hard replica to find, and when you do find one, expect to pay $1,500 to $1,800 for a pair of these. But keep your eyes peeled, and as I always say, educate yourself on Harry Potter merchandise items and rare Harry Potter items, because I found this pair for less than half of its current value. Now, the Harry Potter Horcrux was destroyed by Voldemort himself. He didn't mean to, he didn't know, he thought he was killing Harry. Now, just like the other Noble Collection items, these are so well made. I mean, they feel like real glasses, like you could just wear them. I'm not gonna put them on, but it feels like something that you would go to the store and purchase, but they are beautiful replicas of the ones worn by Daniel Radcliffe in the Harry Potter films. And in this really nice display case that keeps them safe. All right, last but not least, Nagini. She was destroyed by Neville Longbottom, who cut off her head with the Sword of Gryffindor. Now, the Noble Collection created a line of magical creatures, and there are these little statues of different magical creatures. They have a bunch of them available, and Nagini, the giant snake, is one of them. She is in a curled up, ready to strike position. She has some really nice detail on her. Her fangs are out and ready to strike. And if these creatures do come with display cases, I don't have the display case anymore because I just display her on top of my shelves with the rest of the Horcruxes. The base of the display display cases feature like a terrain or a little scene within the display case. And then there's a plastic and plexiglass display box that goes over the top. So it's a fun line of magical creatures to collect. But here is Nagini who represents the final Horcrux to be destroyed. This is a video I've wanted to do for a very long time. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We were waiting on Harry Potter's glasses. This is the item that I wanted to represent Mr. Harry Potter as a Horcrux. No other item would have competed. So we now have the collection of seven Horcruxes. So tell me, which one of these was your favorite? Are these items that you have in your collection or things that you would like to add to your collection? If you have a collection of Horcruxes and don't have Harry Potter's glasses in your collection, what do you use to represent Harry Potter? I'm curious, and it may also help other Potter Collection community members on their hunt to find all seven Horcruxes. If you would like to purchase any of these items, check the description down below. There are links to each one. If you have any questions about Harry Potter or collecting, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also join the Potter Collector community on Instagram, at the Potter Collector, or on Twitter, at Potter Collector. Now it's time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, welcome. 
you can subscribe right up here. You can also look at some previously posted content down here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter books or collecting, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. But for now, I must go. See you next time. Whoa, where'd he go?